Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavalabha Giri Varadari Gopi Janavalabha Giri Varadari Yashora Nandana Vrajadana Ranjana Yashora Nandana Vrajadana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Jayarada Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Vallabha Hirivaradha Gopi Janna Vallabha Hirivaradha Yashora Nandana Vraja Dana Ranjana Yashora Nandana Vraja Dana Ranjana Jamunati Ravanachariamuna Yamuna Tira Vannachari Yamuna Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunda Bihari Jaya Radha Marava Kunda Bihari Jaya Radha Marava Kunda Bihari Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Parivaraja Gacharya Ashtotara Shatra Shri Shri Maravai Charana Ravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Skonsonstra Pakacharya Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Parivaraja Gacharya Ashtotara Shatra Shri Shri Maravai Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Kurivaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai 
Prem Sikaho, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadara, Sri Vasadi, Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Kijai, Sri Sri Rara Krishna Gopagopinath, Sri Amakunna Rara Kunagiri Govardhan Kijai, Sri Vrindavan Dham Kijai, Sri Navadvip Dham Kijai, Ganga Mai Kijai, Yamuna Mai Kijai, Tulasi Devi Kijai, Bhakti Devi Kijai, Sama Veta Bhakta Vrinda Kijai, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale. Simate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Vacharine. Nirvishesha Shunyavari Vashatya Desha Tarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadara Sri Vasudhi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, Chapter 9, The Supreme Character of Jada Bharata, Text 15, Translation Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Oh my God. So you, can you repeat this? Not, it's prose, so it's not a verse. I will just read that as far as possible. Not so easy. There's very <laughs> long words. Huh? Anyway, we'll just hear it. Transcendental sound vibration, Shabda Brahma. Atak panayas tang sva vidina bishishya hatena. Vasacha Chadya <coughs> Bhushanale Pasraktila Kadibir Upaskritam Buktavantam Dupa Deepa Malya Laja Kishalayankura Palapa Haropetaya Vaishasya Sangstaya Mahata Gita Stuti Mirdanga Panava Goshena Chapurusha Pashung Bhadra Kalya Purata Upaveshayam Asuhu all right, let's see every word, the meaning. Atha, thereafter, Panayaha, all the followers of the Dakoit, Tam, him, Jadabharat, Svavidina, according to their own ritualistic principles. Abhishishya, bathing, ahatena, with new, vasasa, garments, acharya, covering, bhushana, ornaments, alepa, smearing the body with sandalwood pulp. Srak, a flower garland. Tilaka Adibi, with markings on the body and so on. Upaskritam, completely decorated. 
Bhuktavantam, having eaten dhupa with incense, deepa lamps, malya garlands, laja parched grain, kishalaya ankura twigs and sprouts. Pala, fruits, upahara, other paraphernalia, upetaya, fully equipped, vaishasasangstaya, with complete arrangements for sacrifice, mahata, great, gita stuti, of songs and prayers, Mridanga, of the drums, Panava, of the bugles, Ghoshena, by vibration, Cha, also, Purusha Pashum, the man animal. Badrakaya of the goddess Kali, Purataha just in front, Upaveshayam Asu made him sit down. <coughs> Translation. After this, all the thieves, according to their imaginative ritual for killing animalistic men, bathed Jadabharata, dressed him in new clothes, decorated him with ornaments befitting an animal, smeared his body with scented oils and decorated him with tilak, sandalwood pulp, and garlands. <coughs> they fed him sumptuously and then brought him before the goddess Kali, offering her incense, lamps, garlands, parched grain, newly grown twigs, sprouts, fruits, and flowers. In this way, they worship the deity before killing the man-animal, and they vibrated songs and prayers and played drums and bugles. Jadabharat was then made to sit down before the deity. Purport. In this verse, the word svadhina according to their own ritualistic principles, is very significant. According to the Vedic Shastras, everything must be done according to regulative principles. But here it is stated that the thieves and rogues devised their own process for killing an animalistic man. The Tamasic Shastras give instructions for the sacrifice of an animal like a goat or buffalo before the goddess Kali. But there's no mention of killing a man, however dull he may be. This process was manufactured by the dacoits themselves. Therefore the word Svavitina is used. Even at this time, there are many sacrifices being conducted without reference to the Vedic scriptures. For instance, in Calcutta, recently, a slaughterhouse was being advertised as a temple of the goddess Kali. Meat eaters foolishly purchase meat from such shops, thinking it different from ordinary meat and taking it to be the prasadam of goddess Kali. 
the sacrifice of a goat or a similar animal before the goddess Kali is mentioned in Shastras just to keep people from eating slaughterhouse meat and becoming responsible for the killing of animals. The conditioned soul has a natural tendency towards sex and meat eating. Consequently, the Shastras grant them some concessions. Actually, the Shastras aim at putting an end to these abominable activities, but they impart some regulative principles so that gradually meat eaters and sex hunters will be rectified. So this last part, the Prabhupada refers to the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, where it says, Loke vyavayang misha madhya seva, nitya hi janto na hi tatra chodana, yavastitis teshu vivaha yagya sura grahai ashu nivrita ishta. In this material world, the conditioned soul is always inclined to sex, meat eating, and intoxication. Therefore, religious scriptures never actually encourage such activities. Although the scriptural injunctions provide for sex through sacred marriage, for meat eating through sacrificial offerings, and for intoxication through the acceptance of ritual cups of wine, such ceremonies are meant for the ultimate purpose of renunciation. So as the story here describes, the leader of the Dacoits, uh, he wanted to obtain a benediction from the goddess Kali. Actually, he wanted a son. <laughs> so, the system is to offer an animal. So, they didn't have a normal animal. So, he thought, he considered that a man who is just like an animal is as good, as, as good enough. Hmm? a man-animal, that's the word used. Uh, so Jada Bharat, because as we know, after having lived for some time as a deer, he took birth again in a Brahmana family, but he was conscious of his past lives and his mistakes. So he didn't want to associate with anybody and become entangled again. So he appeared to be dull, Jada. Jada is somebody who is just like an animal, practically speaking. He didn't speak with anybody. And um, so people thought he was just a useless person. But actually, as we will find out later, he was a self-realized soul. Uh, then when Maharaj Rahugana uh, takes him as one of the carriers of his palanquin, and Jada Bharat didn't want to step even on an ant, and therefore he stopped letting the ant pass, and then he continued. <laughs> so this was not very good for the carrying. Uh, there were four persons, three were going, and some one suddenly stops. So you can imagine how that is not, and the king was inside the palanquin. So he was going like that. <laughs> so he became upset, and uh, he wanted to punish him. <coughs> so then 
there's a talk between Jadabar and Maharaj Rahugana. And Maharaj Rahugana finds out that this is actually a self great personality, a self realized soul. But the Dakoid chief, the Dakoids, they thought this person is as good as an animal, so let us take him and sacrifice him before the goddess Kali. Now, as Prabhupada says in the purport, this was an imagination. It was not proper. Uh, the system is to take an animal, not a man who looks like an animal or seems to be like an animal. So this was their own conclusion, and it is not, was not according to uh, the ritualistic principles. So this is very typical um, tendency. Uh, Shastra gives instructions practically for every aspect of life. Uh, and as was pointed out here, um, that the conditioned soul has this natural tendency toward acting in unprincipled ways. That's the natural tendency to not care for any principles or rules. And nowadays, this is very prominent. Uh, we think we have become liberated uh, from the oppressive rules and norms and uh, principles given by the church in the Western countries. Or, I think in India, similar uh, mentality that those who are in the temples and the priests, they were giving us advice or even instructions what to do, what not to do. Times have changed. Now we can do whatever we want, right? And that's a sign of advancement. We became liberated from this oppressive uh, interference with our freedom to do whatever I like to do. The philosophy, very simple, philosophy of the 60s, if it feels good, do it. Makes sense, no? If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. If you have to get, get up early in the morning and take a shower, that doesn't feel good, don't do it. Sleep until noon, just get up, get a coffee and a cigarette. If it feels good, do it and go to hell. So this is uh, not recommended. <laughs> uh, therefore, earlier, and we have the chapter right here, fifth chapter, Rishabdev instructing his sons and Jada Bharat, uh, Bharat Maharaj, he was one of them, he was the chief actually. Um, first thing Rishabdev tells them, we all know this verse, or we should know this verse, eh? Nayam Deho Deya Majam Nrilo Ke Kashtan Kaman Arate Vidbujami. This is not good, Rishabdev tells his sons, to behave like. If it feels good, do it. It's called kashta kaman. It's a kind of, uh, let's see, the troublesome sense gratification. That's Prabhupada's word for word translation. So, therefore, what is his recommendation? Tapodivyam putraka yena sadvam shudyed brahma saukyam tvanantam. You really want to feel good? Eh? And not just for a short few seconds or minutes, but anan anantam, without end, then tapo divyam, bad news, you have to do tapasya. Oh, we don't want it. No, no tapasya, no. Anything but no tapasya, right? It doesn't feel good. So, but that's the Vedic... Uh, civilization actually, the Vedic way, way, Krishna himself, he gives these instructions, eh? Dharman to Saksha Bhagavad Pranitam. And in Bhagavad Gita he tells us, Yakshastra Vedimutsrijya, 
if we reject this idea of following regulated principles. And what to do? This is the original Sanskrit of it if it feels good, do it. Vartate kama karataha. That's exactly what it means. Uh, you just do whatever you like to do. If it feels good, do it. Vartate kama karataha. So then what is the result of that? Krishna will tell us. First thing, nasa sidhim avapnoti. No perfection. Forget it. Oh. Then, uh, but I, I feel good. I, I will be very pleased and happy. Nasukam, no happiness. But I feel good, yeah, for a very short while. And then it will go away. So therefore, tapodivyam, brahma saukyam, tvanantyam. If you want real happiness that will last and will not just, like flickering, come and go, uh, then you have to shastra vidim. You have to follow these principles and tapodivyam. You have to accept austerity. And then that's all. Not only not no nasidi, nasuka, no perfection no happiness, and naparamgatim. You, you will never reach the supreme destination. So somebody who has a little bit of brain, just a little bit, he will think, so? If that is true, so then why should I act in such a way? That's not very intelligent. And it's Krishna's direct words. And he describes this in the 16th chapter where he speaks about the divine and demoniac nature. So that's the de demoniac mentality. I don't care uh, all these rules and regulations. Um, we just do whatever we want. <coughs> so therefore, as it is pointed out in this verse from the 11th canto, because the tendency is like this, the condition so is in the material world, he wants to enjoy it separately. He doesn't want any rules and regulations of any kind. Um, because that's a fact. Therefore, these religious principles, spiritual principles, are given by the sages as a means that even while you're in the material world, you have a material body, you are entangled already. It's too late. So now what to do? Well, to get out of this situation, you voluntarily accept vidi, uh, uh, certain norms of behavior. And in that way, gradually, one will come to the point of giving it up. So the natural tendency, as is, is described in this verse of the 11th canto is uh, Vyavaya, Amisha, and Madhya. Sex, meat, and drugs. Drugs, sex, and rock and roll. And of course, meat is included. So that's the philosophy. Uh, in different, you can ex exchange these items for whatever inclination you may have. If it's not rock and roll, it may be jazz, or funk, or hip hop, or techno. That's the latest, the, the most, I mean, it has come down. When I was young, rock and roll. Now it's techno. It's even, you know, you're coming from the high platform of rock and roll down to the lowest imaginable platform of techno. No more, there's no more emotion. It's just mayavad, oneness. It's impersonal philosophy. So this is Kali Yuga, very dangerous. And it's all over the world. And I still cannot understand how is it possible. <laughs> how people can listen to this, not just a short while, 
for days, practically speaking. Yeah? You don't know this. It's good. You don't. You have no idea what I'm talking about. This is good. Good sign. <laughs> I will just describe it as far as I, I. I don't know. I just hear it, like I was in South America, and then chanting japa early in the morning. You know, near the beach, and there's this huge pal techno palace. You can say. And it's still going boom, 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 boom. Until the sun comes up, then it will stop and they go to sleep. But they have been there, maybe this is Monday morning. They have been there from Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, until Monday morning. There's certain pills you can take so you don't have to sleep. And you just go on and just go like for 72 hours. Then you drop half dead, sleep, and then you come up again. Oh, it's Friday night. Let's go to the palace and go again. And then you die, and I don't know what you become. What species of life is after techno? Something very tamasic. So this is the natural tendency, and um, the result is being in the material world and just taking birth again and again and going down, 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 as Krishna also describes in Bhagavad Gita. You're not going up. If one is inclined to this kind of life, then the way is just always down. So therefore, um, we should voluntarily accept the offering given by Krishna himself and his representatives, uh, the devotees and the great sages, uh, in one Prabhupada puts it like this, that the acharyas, the sages, they are offering us the process of spiritual life, which you can take or you cannot take. It's voluntarily, of course. We have this little freedom. <coughs> but the vidi, <coughs> The rules and regulations, they should be accepted voluntarily, understanding that they will lead us uh, to the real platform of liberation, not the so-called feeling free. Uh, there was another song. Those who know, they know. I feel free. Yeah, you feel free, but you're not free. It's all imagination. You know, just because you, can, you think I do whatever I want, I feel free. But we know this. I mean, whoever has a little bit of brain can understand that the laws of material nature are very stringent. Uh, that's what Prabhupada uses that word, stringent. You cannot escape. Uh, then sometimes he gives the example. You eat a little more than you should, then immediately you get a reaction you cannot, or whatever the reaction may be, according to your body, then you have to go to the doctor and get some uh, medicine. Yes, in, in, in the Western countries, it's very prominent. Uh, if you eat the wrong way, which everybody does, you get acidity in the stomach. You know, hopefully you don't know. Um, you know, acid is coming up. So then they have pills. You just take the pill. No acidity, you don't get this feeling, and they see now you can eat. Don't don't worry, just continue eating as you know, because you take this pill, you feel very good. Now they have discovered, after so many years using this, the side effects are very bad. Uh, you take this pill every day practically because you every day you eat the wrong way, <laughs> and you and then suddenly you get this whole reaction, you're becoming very diseased, and now it's too late because you have taken hundreds of those pills and the chemistry in your body has changed. Because the laws of nature are like that, you can't just do whatever you want. If you do this, then the laws will oblige you to be like this or be like that. Oh, I don't, I don't want. It doesn't matter who you want or you don't want. You will be obliged by the laws. So therefore, voluntarily, we accept 
principles that are given to make life as, how you can say, well, to make the best use of a bad bargain. That's the idea. It's a bad bargain. So suffering will be there, but at least not unnecessarily. Uh, you behave and you act in such a way that it's like navigating You're in dangerous waters. There's rocks everywhere underneath the surface. You have to know how to go, otherwise you'll hit the rocks and you're finished. Uh, so the material world is a very dangerous place. It's an ocean and there are rocks everywhere. So you have to navigate very carefully to get to the other side. So that's what we have, scriptures and the sages, just to help us to somehow or other navigate these dangerous waters and get to the other side. <coughs> Okay, anything else we can say? Now it's up to you to give some comments, reflections, or questions. We have enough time, I think, 20 minutes. Let me hear. You're all too young to give you realizations, but maybe you're from past lifetimes you remember. Or we have some older members who can speak about the world. Do we have a mobile microphone? We do. Okay, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you very much for your class, Maharaj. Um, I mean, just a question. In the uh, class, in Prabhupada's purport, there was a, um, he was talking about the necessity to follow the Shastras, and you were also saying, you know, quoting Nasa Siddham, Nabhak Mukti. Uh. Um, the, uh, now, my question is, why the emphasis on Vedic Shastras? Why the emphasis? Uh, according, well, let's see. Um, where does it say something? What the are you referring to specifically? The well, Prabhupada, he oh, he at the end. Svavidhim. He Svavidhim versus the Shastravidhim. Yeah. Well, here at the end he says, Actually, the Shastras aim at putting an end to these abominable activities. Or before, consequently, the Shastras grant some concessions. So, as far as I understand this, um, from the 11th canto, the tendency is there that we cannot deny. All the conditioned souls have and it says always have this tendency. That's the material world. Loke, Vyavaya, Amisha, Madhya, Seva. Uh, nitya hi janto. It's always, it's not like, oh, now it's Kali Yuga and therefore we have these tendencies. No. Anytime. Uh, you know, Hiranyakashipu, that means Satya Yuga. Uh, he's the symbol of Hiranya and Kashipu. Uh, so, and the, and, and, and the re regulations or the recommendations of Shastra, they're for all times and all people of all, in all circumstances. Of course, therefore, uh, there are also tamasic Shastras, interesting, and there are rajasic Shastras and sattvic Shastras, uh, like the Puranas, 18 Puranas, six Puranas in tam for Tamaguna, six Puranas for Rajaguna, six Puranas for Sattvaguna, for all kinds of people. If you are tamasic like these people here, they're the dacoits, so they're worshipping Kali to get whatever they want to get. But there's a way to do it, and they don't even do that. They should take an ordinary animal, but now they're taking a man who looks like an animal, and that is called Svavidina, according to their own imagination. So they already get concessions. Yes, you can take an animal, kill it, eh, and this and that, but then they can't even do this. They, they have to do their own, my own way. That's another song. I did it my own way. Very prominent philosophy. Why should I do it your way? Or Bhagavatam's way, or Bhagavad Gita, or Krishna's way. I do it my way. Yeah, my way go to hell. You know. 
So there, yeah, Shastra is, is there for ele elevating, even Tamasic Shastra. They will, people in Tama, they will not be able even to follow Raja, Rajasic Shastras. Yeah? But if they follow Tamasic Shastras, at the end, the idea is, through the acceptance <coughs> of these regulations, then ultimately they will be elevated and at the end, the ultimate purpose is renunciation, to give it up. Which means, not in tamas you cannot do it, in rajas you cannot do it, you have to come to sattva. And then even sattva at the end you have to give it up. Shuddha sattva. But that's a very high goal. So, the rules and regulations are there to come to that point somehow or other. And there's no other way. Hmm? Um, like Prabhupada says, according to the Vedic Shastras, everything must be done according to regulative principles. Even the killing of an animal in front of Kali. There's a certain way. It's only once a month. On Amavasya, on New Moon Night. You don't do that on Purnima. That's not the way. Uh, and you don't take a cow. You don't go in Gor, especially Gor Purnima, <laughs> and you know sacrifice a cow because you are in on this platform of Tamasic Shastra. No, you have to go to Kali. On the new moon night, with a goat or a buffalo. Eh? That's the way. If you do that, well, first of all, you have to. Then you get a mantra where you tell the animal, now I'm sacrificing you, but next life you can kill me. I mean, any, if you do this many, many times, maybe one point you think, this is, doesn't sound very good. <laughs> I shouldn't do this. You know, every time I sacrifice an animal, this same animal now has the right to kill me in a future life. Just because I want to eat some meat. Is that intelligent? I mean, that's a high price to pay, eh? That's therefore when people become so degraded that, as Prabhupada says, recently in Calcutta, they open a slaughterhouse and advertise it as a temple. And people think, oh, it's prasadam. You know, it's purifying. No, it's because it's, again, svavidina, according to their imagination, they call something a temple which has nothing to do with the temple. So this is not helpful. Uh, you have to do it according to the tamasic shastra. Then, maybe, hopefully at one point, you give it up. You become intelligent. That this is not a good deal. I kill an animal and I will be killed? Is that a good deal? It's not a good deal. So that's the idea. Then you give it up. Then you come to rajasic shastras. So many lives. And then you also come to the point of this is not a good deal. You give it up. Then you come to sattva. And even sattva, now you're supposedly more intelligent. Then you can understand. Even if I act so-called purely, uh, and, it, and I have a very good situation on higher planets, even whatever, even that one should understand. This is not a good deal. Abramabhuvala loka punavarti norjuna. You may go up to the highest planet, or you may enjoy in the uh, gardens of Indra uh, with apsaras and all that, but then uh, at the end you'll die and you have to come back to earth and work. It's like going to vacation, uh, uh, and then when you spend all the money, you have to come back and, and, and work. So while you're on vacation, you may think, oh, this is wonderful, but somebody who's intelligent knows, oh, we only have a few days left. Uh, we have to work 330 days in a year to have 30 days of vacation. That's used to be nowadays even not that anymore, I heard. When I was a kid, my father had one month, more than one month vacation. We could, the whole family could go on vacation. Nowadays, if they give you two weeks, you're lucky. Isn't it? Yeah, you have to negotiate. Maybe I can get two, you know, it's two, maybe a few days, a few days here, a few days, you know, so 
uh, but you have to work 330, 40 days just to get 20 days of vacation. Is that a good deal? No, it's not a good deal. So s gradually one should come to these understandings and that's what Shastra is for. And if we don't, uh, uh, like nowadays, most people have reject completely any idea of Shastric regulations, then nasidim, nasukam, naparamgatim. That's the result. You don't get perfection, you don't get happiness, you don't get to the highest destination. If you think, oh, I don't care, okay, suffer. That's all. That's what Maya is for. Then you have to get the stick. Uh, you don't want to listen to Shastra. No argument. You cannot understand the arguments that are given in Shastra. Then what's the other argument? You know some Latin? Argumentum ad baculum. You can understand what that means? The argument of the stick. Uh, yeah, like a, like a mudha, a gada. Uh, he, he doesn't understand your arguments. You tell him, yeah, you have to go this way to... Huh? <laughs> Boom! Argumentum ad baculum. Okay. So if we are like that, you are like a gada, then you need argumentum ad baculum. That's not a good deal. That's for stupid, you know, dull persons. So if one is intelligent, then voluntarily one will accept Shastravidi and Tapodivyam. And then you become elevated. So that's the deal. Hopefully I've answered a little bit. Uh, do, do I, does, does this answer the question? Oh, it's a very nice exposition, Maharaj. Thank, Thank you. you. Maybe too long, but no, it's, no, no, it served its purpose. No, not long enough, actually. <laughs> All right. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Hare Krishna, thank you very much for, <coughs> for sending us so wonderfully Srila Prabhupada's purpose. Thank you very much. My what to do? Is, is there anything <laughs> else? <laughs> My question, Maharaj, is, uh, is connected to the previous question as well as this, uh, which is the previous verse as well as this, they're connected. Uh, My question, Maharaj, is that how does one strike a balance between self-preservation in the, in the moment of adversity and uh, dependence on the Lord? Like, Jarbarat never defending. Uh, actually, Jada Bharat is a good example, isn't it? Because it is explained. Um, he just sat down there. He didn't like, what can I do to defend myself or how to get out of this situation? He actually depended completely. Um, it is said here. In the body of, uh, that's uh, verse 14. Uh, Bharat Maharaj appeared deaf and dumb, yet he was the most intelligent man in the world. Nonetheless, being completely surrendered unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he remained in that condition and did not protest being brought before the deity for slaughter. Now, if you can do that, that is very good. If you can't, then you may want to think about how to preserve your life. That depends on your level of advancement. And th that you can apply to anything. Uh, there's di whatever is given, um, like complete surrender, if you're on that platform, like for example, we have this verse, if you are surrendered to the Lord completely, there's no more debts to anybody forefathers, sages, society, etc., etc., etc. Practically speaking, it means you are free from all responsibility. But you cannot use that as an excuse for not being responsible, saying, oh, it says, if you're, you know, I'm a devotee, I'm surrendered to the Lord, so therefore I don't have any more responsibility to anybody. That may not be true because you may not be completely surrendered. That's for somebody who is exclusively 100% surrendered to the Lord. Then there's no more responsibility. If not, to the degree that you are not on that platform, you have responsibilities. So that you have to, you have to be honest enough to see where you are. So if you're not on that platform, then you better fight or you run. 
you see the duck it's coming, you don't stand there, oh, whatever the Lord wants, I don't mind. That's art maybe artificial, so then better you run. So. <laughs> Thank you, Mahesh. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. Uh, like you said, it's true that uh, our dependence on Lord, that is the sign of advancement, how much we are dependent. Yeah. But the other point, like Mr. Kumar Prabhu was saying that the God has given us intelligence also. Right. So, so we should use intelligence also, no? That's what to I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. So, Marobi Rakobi, you can keep it Shatoha. Whatever you desire, I don't mind. If you are on that platform, that is, that is the right consciousness. But if you're not, you better use your intelligence. And the Lord may give you, uh, how you say, it? hints. Uh, there's a story, who, who remembers that story? That the Lord was providing certain things to a person and they didn't take it. And then they, they complained, and then the Lord, but I, I, I gave you this, I gave you that, and you didn't. Anyway, something like that. So sometimes, yes, we have to be able to, uh, to, to see what if the Lord supplies us some means to take it and use it and not reject it uh, artificially. I don't know whether you get, understand what I'm saying, but <laughs> uh, anyway, but that's the idea. Uh, you cannot artificially just pretend to be on the platform and um, act in, in, in that way. Uh, no. Bharat Maharaj, he simply depended on the Supreme Personality for his protection. Uh, um, and as it says, Prabhupada well says here, as we have learned from the previous verses, he was very strong physically and could have very easily avoided being bound with ropes. But he did not do anything. So that may not apply to us. That may be really artificial. Eh? So you may use, if you have, your strength to um, get out of this situation. Everybody has to judge. Where do I stand? But we can understand the ultimate, the best uh, consciousness is to completely depend on the Lord for protection. That's a fact. All right. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, my question is that the soul, it is described as being an internal part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. And its constitutional position is Sachidananda. Mm -hmm. Then why does it fall down? Does it not anticipate that when will it will fall down, it will end in this world of suffering? That is my <laughs> question. <laughs> again, the same question again and again. First of all, Prabhupada said, don't bother about it because it's impossible to understand. He actually says that. It's mysterious. So he doesn't answer it directly. But the understanding is we are like the little spark in the fire. So there's a tendency. It's just a tendency that the spark may go out of the fire. Why? How? When? That's another thing. But the tendency is there. So similarly, Krishna is Swarat. He is completely independent. And as you said, we are part and parcel. So we do have a very small fraction of independence. And you can apply it as you wish. Krishna will not interfere. And we can refer to a similar related question in Jaiva Dharma where the devotee, the disciple asks why Krishna has made the soul weak or so weak 
that the soul can be overpowered by maya, right? We may ask this question. If Krishna is all-powerful and all-knowing, he knows that we have this tendency and because it's actually his fault that I'm now in this situation because he made me weak. He didn't make me strong enough so I could resist Maya. Does that make sense, this kind of thinking? Yes, it sounds logical. So what's the problem with that? There is no problem. In fact, it well, is... No, no, yes, there is a problem. The problem is with all the conditioned souls, there is a problem, definitely. No, problem. no, you don't understand my question. If we think like that, that wha we are actually accusing Krishna of... Krishna. Now, I'm, I'm accusing Krishna, now you have to defeat me. Why have you made me so weak that I can fall into Maya. You are all powerful. You could have made me a little bit different, right? A little bit more strength. Just enough so I can resist Maya. And again, my, what is the problem with this kind of thinking? You don't know. So now we have to find out. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, he knows. Give him the microphone. <laughs> Give him the microphone. We will find out whether he really knows. It's a good sign. If he knows, that's a very uh, good sign this for, for the Delhi temple. Eh? Uh, Maharaj, Let's hear. No, we, uh, we already praised him before hearing the, what he said. Maharaj, this argument can be very easily refuted because I, oh, the Lord is so merciful that the living entity, even though he has fallen into the material energy, he can any time take shelter of the internal potency and by simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But it is so easy to take shelter of the internal potency. Do you think that answers my question? Does it answer my question? Why has the Lord made me so That's weak? my question. Is that your answer? Is uh, answering my question? It is uh, the living... Who, who thinks that is answering my question? You don't... So if you don't think, then what is the answer? Anybody has a bet? I praised him too early. <laughs> Somebody who has not spoken. Uh, you get your chance because they probably will not answer his All right, all right. Let's hear from the authorities. <coughs> this whole argument is self-defeating because when it presupposes that if God is omniscient, then he's not omnipotent. He knows that the jiva can fall in, but he's not capable of stopping it. That means he's not no. God in the first place. That's not my point. Maybe I should again phrase the question because it seems you don't understand the question. My accusation is, my dear Lord, why have you made me so weak that Maya can overpower me? You could have made me a little stronger so I can resist Maya and I never fall into the material world. So it's your fault. Maharaj, this is our constitutional position. We are, we are made like that and there is no problem in that. This is a, there is a loving relationship with the Lord, so what is the problem? The problem is uh, that he hasn't, hasn't made me strong enough. So therefore, I'm here now. No, but this is our, he has not made, this is our constitutional position. Lord has not made us like that. Of course yes. he has. It is, it is our constitutional position. What? I to mean, be in the material? We are like that only. To be in the material world? No, we are like that. No, are. Why are we like that? This is because true. he made us like that. Like, like Lord also come to become a, a jiva, like uh, he, he come in the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's form to be subordinate to the Lord. He also want to be in that position. So this, is, this position is not problematic. Is, is it my question so difficult to understand? You don't understand my question still. Maybe, s can you... You still have, oh, we are over time already, but I want to have the answer. Otherwise, I have to give the answer, which I want, don't want to do. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Jai. Um, it's not the fault of God uh, that he made me weak. It is my desire to um, it is my desire to um, that's all right. To experience the pleasure. That's all and, right. And that's why uh, I've fallen down. <laughs> it was my desire, not his fault. Yes, but still, if I would be stronger by nature, then I, even if so, I, have, I may have a desire, but then I don't become overpowered by Maya. So that doesn't answer the question either. So. Rama, Raghava, Hare Krishna, long, long time we haven't seen you. Good that you are still around. Uh, okay, let's go there. Let's see whether we get the answer. Hare Krishna Maharaj, <coughs> thank you for the question. Uh, <coughs> we in the spiritual world do have, have the same qualities of Krishna, right? So, Krishna gave us free will, and uh, it's through this free will that we... The what is the word? Free will. Free will, okay. So it's through the free will that we come here. Right. And it's the free will that we're going on that. Because okay. Because we are not robots, Krishna. Yeah, you're on your way. Yes, so it must be because we want, uh, you know, I guess you mentioned that Prabhupada said, doesn't matter how you came here, matters that's, well how you that, get up. That's but right. Now, now I answer your question. Yeah. So it's through the free will, that would be my, my answer. Yeah, okay. But still we are missing a little ingredient here. Let's, you, 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 get, you have the answer? You get Rama Raghava. Uh, Maharaj, thank you very much for your class. And so so let's, let's hear the answer. Yes. Um, it's it's very close to what Gorak Shura Prabhu said. Okay. That um, we, we have the free will. So yes, if yes. he made us stronger, he would be taking away that free will. That's exactly the answer. That's the exactly the answer. Then you don't have a choice. If you now you're complaining, you should have made me stronger, so Maya cannot overpower me. That means you have no choice. You have to serve. That means yeah, robot type of, you know so many living entities, namaha, namaha, and they cannot do anything else because, yeah, they don't have the choice. So the free will is a precious item as it is described, and love has to be voluntary. You have to, from your own choice, yes, I want to serve you, I want to love you, and if you are made in such a way that you never can become overpowered by Maya, then that is, that is taken away. So that's the answer. Thank you very much. We can conclude here. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Grantarashima Bhagavatam ki jai. Hare Krishna.